Dear Perf audience, welcome to the Perf TV live from the 26th Perf, Tallinn's wonderful and most adorable Black Nights Film Festival. My name is Nikki Nikitin and I have the honor to be the curator of the newly established section Critics Picks. Critics Picks focus on the best world's authors cinema with a special twist. And I have a very dear friend with me, a uh, returner to, to Perth, June, from uh, the Philippines, because you had your last production, The Big Night, mm -hmm. already with us. Yeah. So welcome back. Thank welcome you. Welcome back yeah, to, to Tallinn. And thank you for bringing about us, but not about us. Yes. So this is a wonderful film which was shot during COVID, mm -hmm. but we don't see that it's at all connected with COVID mm -hmm. because it's so masterfully crafted, so well directed, Thank so you. well acted. But for me to s break the ice, to mm -hmm. start the interview, the script is so outstanding. Mm -hmm. Each line is really to the, the point. Mm -hmm. The dialogues are, are brilliantly masterful developed, played on. So dear June, I think it took you a very long time to write this marvelous script, no? Um, actually, it took me three days. To, three days? Yeah, three days to, to write the script. But it's the first time that I was able to do something like that because usually I work on a script for months, sometimes years, it takes me years, but this is so personal that I was able to write it in, in three days. So we're not gonna spoil it to the audience because you know there are still screenings mm -hmm. going on, th mm -hmm. so they're gonna see it. So let's talk about us, but not about us in terms. Yeah. Let's not tell so much about the story, right. but let's t uh, maybe you tell why is it so personal to you? How are you connected with what the audience mm -hmm. will see on the big screen? Yeah. Um, well, as you mentioned, it was, it was shot uh, at the height of COVID. And also during that time, like most people, I was going through a lot. I lost some of my dear friends, colleagues, and family members. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my long relationship also came to an end. And uh, it was, I was just going through so much that I decided to turn to writing because writing is the one thing that's been constant in my life. It's the one thing that I can always turn to whenever something's wrong. Um, I wasn't really planning to write a screenplay, but when I started to write, it it kind of, the, the form and the structure kind of um, just arrived. And I just started writing, and at the end of it, I was surprised that I, I had this story. It's fictional, uh, but the memories and everything that the characters are talking about, those are my personal memories. Even the most painful ones that they discuss in the film, those are my painful memories and I realized that the reason why I wrote the screenplay now especially last night when we had the world premiere when I was watching it on a big screen it was a way of letting go and at the same time it was so healing it's really a journey of healing for me from the time I wrote it to the time I went here last night and watched it I feel it has set me free in so many ways and that's why I'm so thankful to be back here and just to have that screening last night it's it's really it's just a gift it's really a gift. So as a curator of the section, I have to say I'm very happy that we were able to present you and to, to help. The term curator, dear audience, actually comes from the uh, art world, from mm -hmm. the museum. So curators usually in the Louvre or, you know, in all the big museums yeah. who chooses a picture, who does a thin red mm -hmm. line, which I also try, mm -hmm. and curare, where curator comes from, from Latin means to heal. Wow. But I'm so thankful for you, June, that you are sharing with the world, mm -hmm. with this world mm -hmm. premiere, the healing process of yourself, which is amazing art. Thank you. And let's talk, please, about the two fantastic actors mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit how you found them, because obviously then maybe one of them is your mm -hmm. alter ego. Yeah, and right. uh, how was the casting process? When I was writing the script, I already had I already had some actors in mind, and definitely Elijah Hanlas, uh, the one who played the student in the film, is somebody who's I've I've worked with him before. He's part of the film that I presented here uh, in 2019. 
uh, Kalel 15. He was the star of that film. So I was thinking maybe he would be perfect for this role, but at the same time, I didn't want to guarantee him anything. So I asked him if he would be willing to audition. And he did. And he really nailed it. He really nailed uh, the role. And also, Romney Clementa is, um, is a famous star in the Philippines. He's long established. He started as a, as a child actor. Uh, and he's also very, very good. And I can say that both of, both of, both of these characters and both of these actors represent me in a way. And uh, when I saw them the first time that we had a reading together, I saw them that, you know, I, I, I felt that I had a movie because, you know, you'll be watching just two actors on screen and they have to be perfect and they were perfect. So I'm not getting tired to say that Critics Picks is somehow also influenced by the Nouvelle Vague, you know, by uh, great film critics. Truffaut, Godard, Chabrol, who then became uh, filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And there's a famous French uh, director, Robert Bresson, who mm -hmm. said, I'll paraphrase a little bit, basically the only thing you need to make a good movie is a man, a woman, and a chair. Mm -hmm. So you have two men mm -hmm. and a table, mm -hmm. and it's not boring for a single second. So the dialogues are brilliant, mm -hmm. the actors are brilliant, mm -hmm. But can we can you elaborate a bit on the visual style? Because mm -hmm. after all, it's cinema, right? Yes. It's not a yeah. theater play. Right, right. This one thing that I was very conscious of because I didn't want it to, to I didn't want to present it as theater. Although it's varo, it, it does borrow a lot of, a lot of inspiration, uh, from 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 theater. But this is cinema, and I wanted the lens to tell a story. I don't usually storyboard my films. I mean, I prep a lot, but I don't storyboard my films. But for this particular project, because there is just two characters, I wanted to be very intentional with my shots. So the entire film is storyboarded from, from the first shot to the last shot. And I wanted to tell how the dynamics of the two characters are changing in terms of who's in a power position and who's suddenly uh, changing uh, uh, his stance on things. I wanted it to be very visual. Uh, because you know, they're all, they're, uh, I did, I, did, I did want the visual part to also support the storytelling, um, because you know you have a script, you have the context and all, but how do you, how do you uh, bring about uh, the visual part of it? So that's that was a, a huge challenge for me, because I didn't want to just be watching talking heads on screen. Mm -hmm. So I believe very much that, that cinema is the greatest of all art forms and there's a very special craft department that makes cinema cinema because we can always say that literature, that the script comes from literature, the actors from theater, the DOP from photography, but what makes cinema cinema as a experience in time is the editing, yes. is the uh, paste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Whatever I said before, it only works because it's edited in, in a perfect and very exact mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us something about the editing process? D were you editing parallel? How did you... It, it was very painstaking, the editing, because I always believe that when you edit a film, you're also restructuring it. It's like you're... Re revisiting the script again, you're revisiting the movie again and looking at it from a really different uh, perspective. You really need to separate yourself uh, from the time that you started making it and try to look at it from a different point of view and see how you can turn it into a cohesive um, story, cohesive whole. So I w I've been working with the same editor for years, so you know we have a shorthand. We already know each other. We already know what we want from each other. So in terms of pacing and rhythm, that was one thing that we really worked on, uh, because I didn't want it to be too long. I, I wanted it to have it to be just exact in terms of uh, time. And you manage this. Talking about time, I'm very sorry, June. We have to yeah. finish. But dear audience, please watch. About us, but not about, about us. us. Yeah. Please find June, who is still here a couple of days, or find me. Talk to us, because it's June's world premiere. Thank you for coming back. Thank you so, so much, much. For, for, for inviting us. Thank you. And uh, this is Perf TV. Keep watching. My name is Nikki Nikitin. See you at the cinemas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.